Hello, everyone. Welcome to the fourth episode of Celeb Works Live, uh, where Falcor Skeletor, Dr. Rudy Wells, all coexist in the body of a 90 year old man. I'm Christopher Arasaga. I'm Neri Lemus. Thanks for joining us. Uh, before we bring on our special guest, we want to remind you that uh, you can be automatically entered to win an autographed certified 8x10 photo. And for this one, we actually have a, a special one. It's actually JSA, and it's signed by Jennifer Jason Lee right here. And there's the certificate here from JSA, which is going to be very important to our episode today. Um, and we, uh, in 2019, we conducted a private signing with Jennifer Jason Lee. So that's why we have that. And that's why we want to give it away today. Uh, all you have to do is share this live stream, and we will contact the winner after the show ends. I'm excited to bring on our dynamic duo to the program, but before I bring them on, let's introduce them. James Spence Authentication is the leading auth autograph authentication company in the world. JSA has the universal respect and approval of auctioneers, dealers, and collectors world worldwide with their accurate authentication experience. Employed by every major auction house in the country, JSA has accumulated a massive exemplar database totaling nearly 500,000 files. They use this extensive exemplar library for JSA autograph authenticators to utilize when accurately assessing the thousands of autographs submitted daily. The, our guest, first, James Spence III, uh, is the vice president of James Spence Authentication. He is a fourth generation autograph collector, and he's been exposed to autographs his entire life. While growing up in Pennsylvania, he consistently did the national show circuit with his father. This experience provided him with a great working knowledge of autographs in the hobby. He began working full-time for JSA following his graduation from the University of Pittsburgh with a BA in finance and economics. His passion for autographs and knowledge in this industry has made him a valuable member of our autograph community. When he's not comparing autographs to JSA's exemplar database, James enjoys golfing, surfing, traveling with his family, and has mastered the art of manual coffee brewing. Ryan Spence <laughs> is the marketing director at James Spence Authentication. His background in creative marketing has helped brand the JSA name as well as promote the memorabilia marketplace. Following film school, Ryan served as the lead cinematographer at a Pennsylvania-based creative marketing agency, producing a wide array of video and photography projects. He also runs a successful video production company called Ryan Spence Film. We are proud to know both these gentlemen inside and outside the business, and both proud to call them friends. Please welcome James Spence III and Ryan Spence of James Spence Authentication Company. What's going on? Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> <we're gonna> go. <laughs> What's up? Uh, thanks for joining us today, guys. No doubt. Yeah. Happy thanks for having us. So uh, we, uh, we hope you're okay with taking some questions. Also to the general public that's uh, tuning in, if you have any questions, for the JSA Duo or for us, for Nuri and I, uh, please post them in the official stream and we'll answer them if we can. <laughs> so, yeah, just laughing at my brother we, down we, can, we can bombard you guys like all day long with all kinds of crazy questions. Oh, yeah. uh, so I guess to establish basically first and foremost the people that are probably you know joining in and don't really know too much about what's going on with authentication maybe there's people that just don't have a working knowledge can you guys explain uh what a third party authentication is yeah so third party authentication is is an expert opinion on an autograph anybody can perform third party authentication it all depends on the uh, reputation of the individual or the company that is giving that expert opinion so fortunately we have you know, the greatest reputation uh, for autographs in our industry uh, it was started by my our father james spence jr uh jsa was uh formed may 1st 2000 uh, may for may 1st 2005 so we're coming up on our 15 year <laughs> pretty wild yeah that's cool wow yeah um so let's talk about your dad a little bit. Uh, James Spence Authentication was founded in 2005. Uh, and you guys, you built like this reputation that's stellar. I mean, it's second to none in the autograph uh, industry. Um, so tell us more about like what 
uh, you know, what scope you guys have in the business, meaning like, where's your offices, you know, what, where, you know, where do you guys show up to provide a, authentication to people like in person, maybe if somebody wants to come and pick up stuff or I mean, drop off stuff, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, we have two offices. We have one in Parsippany, New Jersey. That's the one my brother Ryan works out of. Also, uh, my father works out of that one. Uh, we started our Fort Lauderdale, Florida office back in 2012, August of 2012 as an expansion office. And uh, there's just a ton of people in Florida all throughout and a lot of New Yorkers, New Jersey, people from New Jersey, people from the Boston area, they all migrate to Florida. And there's one thing that they don't throw away when they come down to Florida is their prized autograph possessions that they got. When they're <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs> they're Mickey Mantle Ball, their Babe Ruth that their grandmother gave them. Um, that's the one thing that you hold to hold so true to, you know, yourself. It, it just brings good memories, whether, whether the thing's worth something or worth a fortune, you're always going to hold on to that piece of memorabilia. So, um, Florida is a great area for us. And yeah, the same thing with New Jersey It's just, uh, there's a lot of collectors in our area. Um, hopefully eventually we'll come out to see you guys out in, uh, Southern California. <laughs> We would, anytime we come on out we got anytime. in and out waiting for you anytime <laughs> yeah. absolutely uh let's you know talk, talk about your dad a little bit i mean he's such an influential figure in the authentication industry growing up what was the importance of autographs to each of you because of your dad go for it Rob. uh yeah i mean I, it was definitely um i mean uh it was all around us all the time um i don't really have uh, a memory that doesn't include autographs. Everything was kind of there um, growing up in the house. Uh, my dad or our dad uh, started off doing framing um, and selling autographs. I think at one time he was the uh, biggest autograph dealer in the, in the country, really. I mean, wow. and maybe even in the world. Um, and uh, after that, um, you know, he, started uh, autograph authenticating back in 2000. Um, so we saw the transition, especially my brother and I, we, we saw kind of the early stages of his appreciation of autographs um, and how he sold things and understood the market um, and, uh, and everything, I mean, pretty much was done on paper and phone back then. I mean, it, it, there was very limited, uh, internet, um, access and everything. And then once the internet kind of came into, uh, fruition, uh, he started, um, that's when autograph authentication, I think really took off. Um, cause we had, I think the right tools like with computers and, and printing out letters and all of that stuff is super important. Uh, to giving people the documents that they need um, for authentication. So um, it really just evolved over time. Um, but that uh, sort of that core belief of just appreciating autographs was just always all around us. And he, he was always just getting stuff, putting it up on the walls, changing it off for something else. So um, <laughs> we, we just saw that. <laughs> we kind of just saw that variety uh, just just growing up. So yeah, we, knew, we knew. I, I, I laughed. At, I laughed at that part because. I think it's like anybody who's truly got like a massive collection, like everybody on here right yeah. now, like we <laughs> yeah. have, our collections are so big, like wall space, like back here, you can't really see anything, but I put stuff on the back of my door and like, dude, anywhere. Yeah. And then like maybe a year <laughs> later, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to switch everything out. <laughs> yeah. It's it, our industry. Our, our collections are endless too. I'm always thinking about a new piece that I need, or, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, music autographs and, um, I collect a lot of vinyl signed pieces and there's always that favorite, you know, album that came out. I'm, I'm currently looking for a, uh, a Smashing Pumpkin Siamese Dream full band sign. Oh. So if anybody has a lead for me, there's a lot of fakes out there. Um, Find two. Go. I'll take one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take one too. I love that album. One, one came through our office, I want to say like a year ago. And... Um, I uh, normally never do this, but I reached out to the guy and I said, I am a huge Smashing Pumpkins fan. This is one of my favorite albums of all time. Do you have any intention on selling it? And he came back to me and said, you know, I really appreciate you taking, um, you know, admiration towards my album, but this is my holy grail. I can't part <laughs> oh, wow. with this and I don't want to offend you with the price that I'm going to give you. So uh, it's <laughs> how rare it is if, if we don't see one. 
in yeah. you know we see one one every three or four years. That's completely well, wow. The, so the lead the lead singer is Billy Corgan, right? Billy, oh, yeah, yeah, Billy Corgan. So yeah. he's he's notorious for being a very difficult signer. You know. Yeah. For, yeah. For you know, music. I was listening to uh, Corgan on on a Joe Rogan podcast, and fun fact about Billy Corgan: he is obsessed with uh, professional wrestling. So really? you can find the guy. <laughs> That's talk cool. About wrestling, talk about the Undertaker. Talk about you know Bruiser Brody, and you'll probably get his attention. Versus you know bringing up melancholy and the infinite sadness. I'm sure he gets that all. <laughs> Right, of course. You know, one of the things that I think he has his own T-shirt company, and sometimes I, I'm not sure if it's a T-shirt company or a, uh, a uh, it's a product company, whatever it is. If you go look for it on his website, he actually sells signed albums yearly uh, from his most famous uh, musical work, and he actually signs them. So it, he does it once a year. So you have to be the, on his website that once a year whenever he decides to do it. Yeah, it's kind of like yeah. That's a, you know that kind of that kind of reminds me of just kind of um that that's always like a big question I think that we get a lot is uh the people that end up submitting um the the stuff that's sold online on an artist's website um like you know like uh Eminem si like signs yeah. those posters and everything puts them in the album I know Taylor Swift did something that she like signed a CD and it's like it's really nothing it's just kind of like some like it, it, she <laughs> didn't really give much yeah. on that. Yeah. Um, and Kendrick just, Lamar autograph. <laughs> yeah. But it's kind of, I mean, it worries me because it's always like the customer service on the other end when somebody looks to return one of those items and everything. And um, I mean, just as the, the people who are selling them, the artists that are selling them, I mean, people start question, questioning the integrity, uh, especially when they don't know exactly like if that's the real deal or not. I'll bring up so, an example. Right. I'm glad you brought it up, but Lil Wayne right now, uh, it's a huge topic of the autograph industries because he was selling autographs through his, uh, you know, universal music group. Uh, and unfortunately they say that it's a secretary that did them because it doesn't match any of the exemplars of his former autograph. So a lot of right. people right now are doing chargebacks and returns and they're struggling to get universal to respond. So that's, wasn't there, that's what wasn't it there was. some yeah. female of some sort of uh, uh, singer that that happened with? I think it was like Demi Lovato. Did. Demi Lovato, Demi, right? Demi, yeah, Demi Lovato. Lovato. yeah. yeah. I remember also. that. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. And it's it's, yeah. it's unfortunate because, um, you know, as soon as I learned about it, I even texted Chris Jones saying, hey, heads up, little Wayne. Not good. And, uh, <laughs> Keep an eye out. <laughs> yeah, we, um, hey, I, I did have that discussion with Chris, and then a few other, a few other JSA authenticators picked up on this. So we've updated our exemplar files with, you know, everything coming off of his website. But it's it's spurious to what his autograph looks like now. At least the ones that we've seen. We can't, you know, definitively say that every single one of them off the website is bad. Just be careful. Um, but luckily, you know, you, they're issuing refunds and, um, you know, if you're not happy with the product, they'll, they'll give you your money back, but it's, it's very common. It, it, you're right. It's very common. And it, one of the things that we've been trying to teach people on here is you have to be very, uh, you know, you have to have a close eye when looking and buying memorabilia, because I think at one time, I think it was like autograph collector magazine claimed that there's 50% of the open market that are just littered with forgeries, 50%. And that's incredibly high. Would you agree that uh, it that percentage is that high? You know, there's a lot of real autographs out there. I mean, you think about how many real Bob Feller autographs there are. Oh, of course. <laughs> the, the joke, the joke yeah, was Bob that Bob Miller. Feller, the joke was that I Bob think Feller I have like pay you to get an autograph of his. Yeah. So, I mean, we we oh yeah we always say that it, it, a fake Bob Feller is worth more than a real one. Absolutely. That's right. If you Absolutely. can find an unsigned Bob Feller photo, it's worth more than a signed one. <laughs> uh, yeah, I break out the block light and try and find the autograph. God bless him, man. He was so nice. Yeah, was. I know. <laughs> it's funny because I was just listening to Matt Damon on it was it was on some talk show or something. I want to say it was like uh, Jimmy it was Kimmel or Jimmy something. Jimmy Kimmel, I think. Yeah. Right? right. And he was saying like they were they were like, yeah, you know, you're such a good signer. Like, what was the deal? And he, I guess between him and Ben Affleck when they started. It, they felt like 
that if they just signed everything at some point there yeah. would be like nobody asking him but yeah, now people just bring that. him stacks of crap and then he <laughs> signs it all anyway. Oh, and his, yeah. and he said that his floor, I think it's like what thirty dollars or something like that is what he said. Uh, yeah, thirty dollars. But he said it never worked out because people kept bringing him stacks, and the whole point was to get right. the people to stop doing it. You know, <laughs> I don't feel bad for Matt Damon, Ben Affleck. One's Batman, and the other one, you know, Goodwill Hunting. When you uh, when you work. make when you make Jason Bourne like that and Jason Bourne, <laughs> yeah. when you make movies yeah. like that, you're going to have an endless number of fans asking for autographs forever. You know, very yeah, true. You get to that status, of course. So yeah. I'm I'm gonna get us right back on track. But uh, uh. Chris, Chris and I are very big on the family element of your company. It's one of the reasons you and I and our team work so well with your company. And uh, you know that is a value at the core of us. It, how, how does that family element play a part of your company? Well, I mean, it uh, it, it it gets tough at times because we're not afraid to. Uh, you know, give radical candor to each other. Um, but, you know, we all, we all have to yeah. back. It's an understatement. Uh, we, uh, you know, we, we, we all equally work our, our asses off when, when with, with this never ending, uh, you know, autograph authentication submissions and always looking for ways to improve our service and come out with new services like encapsulation, autograph grading, uh, we're coming out with something that's going to be uh, very favorable to people that you know, are looking to buy autographs on online. It's going to be called JSA First Look. Uh, there's a there's a few pieces that we're, we actually have time now to to sit down and figure this stuff out. Um, now that you know a lot of the shows are canceled, all the comic cons are canceled, um, that doesn't stop us. You know, we're we're going to keep yeah. it. So it's good to have you know family to you know grind with you and. Um, yeah, Ryan. I mean, what? what you're yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's definitely. I mean, I think it's always been that that family dynamic. Um, uh, my my dad kind of started off that. Um, of just, uh, I mean, really autograph authentication. He had it in his home at one time, and <laughs> um, and where where it started, and um, eventually uh, it was a home office, and he had the authenticators and everybody working there in his home. Um, and he had it down in his basement and people would come in and this is all, this is all out in Pennsylvania uh, and in rural Pennsylvania where, I mean, I was born, uh, Jimmy wasn't born there, but we grew up there, uh, pretty much for the majority of our, our childhood. And, um, and people would drive out there like from two hours out in, uh, North Jersey or New York. And, uh, they would come out there with their, their mantle baseballs and their Williams and, they would submit them. And I mean, we weren't getting the foot traffic like we do now uh, at our offices just because, I mean, they're strategically placed in, in the locations that they are for a reason. Uh, North Jersey is obviously the Mecca of like pretty much where a lot of this started. And um, I'm not sure the national, I, I, you know, at first I thought the national was started in the Northeast, but wasn't it started in Anaheim though, right? Anaheim. I think it was in yeah. California. So it was mm -hmm. more in your neck of the woods. So um the uh but i mean we just see constant people just coming in uh submitting stuff mail mail orders um but really where uh where we're on fire is when we're out on the road and i think the convenience that that brings to people is uh is super important uh, one because people don't like shipping their items uh they want to hold on to them they want to be there for the experience Two, they want to meet with an expert. They like that one-on-one -on -one interaction with uh, with an authenticator. They get to meet one and um, and talk to them, geek out about autographs with us and and everything, and understand um, what they mean uh, to the industry and what they mean to themselves. So and I, I uh, think because, you bring up yeah. such a good point because generally the way that I fell in love with your company is because of the, the team that you have that family feeling, that family approach, the, the, the ability that I have to talk to people. And let's get an elephant out of the room. How is authentication impacted during the epidemic? Because a lot of it is that face-to-face -face turning and submissions on site contact. So if mm -hmm. you guys can both touch base on that, how is it, how has it affected us? Yeah. Authentication wise, it's affected all the companies drastically. I mean, there's, there's a few of our competitors that 
aren't operational. Like their their offices are closed and nobody can go in the building. And I don't think they're even answering their email. Yeah. Um, we're fortunate both of our offices are operational. We're uh, accepting submissions through the mail. Um, but yeah, any human interaction or anything like that, we obey our social distancing um, as, you know, as much as possible. So that's very, very important right now. Is, you, but, um, is your is your team worried when they're getting these on mail and submissions because they're coming from around the country and you don't know really who the customer is and their their medical history? Are you worried of the the virus sort of coming through to the office that way? I mean, there's always uh, the concern, but we take all precautions. We wear gloves. Mm -hmm. We have um, hand sanitizing. Um, you know lotions everywhere um, just like every other company i'm sure you guys are following the same procedures um yeah. but <laughs> i wipe down each package every package that comes in i have my lysol wipes and i'm just wiping down like it's the most bizarre thing and i realize like how dirty a package gets oh, from it's it, it, like it's transport i'm like like so the true. whole rag is just like, yep. like bad yeah and, it's funny when this um, when this started uh, Chris Jones came and picked up some stuff from us and I walked outside and he had his car across the street. He had the back, the back open and he like stood in the front of the car and said, Oh, just put your stuff in the back of the car. And I was like, okay, <laughs> this was like way before like yeah. everything got all crazy. And I was like, yeah, I guess it's, it's probably going to get to this point, it, it uh, but he was it. totally safe. Like Chris yeah. Jones was totally safe. Yeah. yeah. It's super awkward right now. I'm very personable <laughs> with our customers. You know, I, I consider a lot of them, my friends like you guys, and it's just so hard not to give you guys a bro hug. Or have of course, that, that, I know. That it's, relation, yeah. relationship with your clients because that that means the most. To, it, it means more than the autograph itself. It's the, it's the experience. I forget uh, what uh, you know. Uh, a successful businessman said. He goes, "Don't sell a product. Sell an experience, and you'll have Absolutely. a successful company." So yeah, and mm -hmm. that that's literally what our company is because you know we bring celebrities to shows and we're selling the experience. I mean, most yeah. of the time. You know the autographs are something that people show off after the fact but i think it's more that people like oh you know who i met last week i got to meet so and so and here's a picture of me with that person and then people come in the house and they see that signed photo like i was just showing you my my um before we got on the air i was showing him my matt groaning and uh, anytime <laughs> anybody walks by that there's an awesome story that goes with it so i, I feel like that's why autograph collecting is so cool at least to me yeah. is that every single piece that i own there's like a story behind it great you know, at least for the most part yeah, but, yeah. And, that, and that's my my office i have all these different pieces that i've acquired through my whole life and i can talk your ear off about each one and some good experiences some not so good experiences <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah i think that experience of like um well, because you have to be skeptical in this industry too, and that's that can go off into another whole different subject and everything. But um, <laughs> we'll I guess one that thing later. that I do see, yeah. I, well, one thing that I do see, well, I mean, especially this is kind of like just an accolade to you guys and everything, is that um, I do see that there is an ex like that your clients and and uh, and your celebrities are are extremely comfortable at at the comic cons that we attend because um, they're it's just they see they see each other on the circuit at this show and then they'll fly to this city and they, they, right. uh, they get to be a family. Like they get to, uh, have some drinks afterwards or whatever, and they get to socialize and it's a different experience because they are usually just kind of, uh, they're in their element or they're in their other professional element. And this is a different sort of experience for them because now they're having this one-on-one -on -one interaction with the person who is ingesting all of the stuff that they're entertaining for. Yeah. So right. that, that, yeah, you, that's you like- You guys keep, keep your clients that's happy. Important. I, I've seen yeah. every, every Comic-Con I've been to with you guys, your guys are so happy to be there. The worst experience is when you come up to a guy like Lou Ferrigno, and we've all had our experiences with Lou. <laughs> And you're like, I, I started you know, because of you and Arnold Schwarzenegger, you have no idea how many times I've, I've played pumping iron with my buddies and I've flexed and I've, you know, just, I, I admire you so much. And then he cuts you off and he goes, 
that, you know, to sign this comic book, I'm going to need 50 more dollars. It's like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I have to say thank you both. It is a testament of our company. I think it's something that we as agents strive for is to make sure that our interaction with our clients is honest. It, it's of good intention and it has that family quality. So then that way they can go out and do the same for their fans. And that's so important to Chris and I is that fan experience that it's never tainted. Uh, we never want a fan to walk away feeling that they just wasted the, the time and money they just spent uh, to meet our client. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. very big on us. And we, we do a great job of, uh, of walking our clients through the process and explaining how everything should be done, especially if they're new to it. So that really means a lot to us that you guys bring that up. Um, with I think, I think it's cool that, you know, you, you mentioned that, you know, they all have fun and, and have a good time when they go. And it, and it does lead back to that family thing because, you know, when, when we're at the shows and we do go out, you know, afterwards we go eat or whatever, like, you know, there's people that would have never met otherwise in the business that meet each other because they do a show together and they're part of our, you know, the Celebrix family. And then, you know, after it's over, you know, we'll get the, you know, a client going, Oh, who's going to this show. They'll call us and be like, Hey, who's going to this show. And it's somebody that like they <laughs> never worked with, but they're like so stoked that, you know, this person's going with them. And it's because of the previous experience and they get to be friends and, you know, hang out and do stuff. And I, I think that's so cool. I think, I just, I don't know. I just have fun with that. And yeah. I think hey, that's cool that yeah. you notice that. A, a perfect example of that is Morgan Lofting, who's the Baroness in GI Joe is friends with Margaret Carey, who's Tinkerbell. <laughs> yeah. The, weird, the weirdest <laughs> combo ever in the world, but they're but friends now. How did it now. happen? How did it happen? Be because, it of happened because of the Comic-Con. Because of the exactly. Comic-Con. Yeah. So we, yeah. we went, oh, over to in Toluca Lake, we went to uh, we were going Patties, somewhere I near there, Patties. and we had to pick up something from uh, Morgan Lofting, and she's sitting there eating lunch with Margaret Carey. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, dude, what is going on here? This is so strange. It's a total yeah. mind mess. So, yeah, you know, cool. yeah, uh, go ahead, go for it. No, now. no, no, please. Oh, no, please. I was going to get to like sort of your daily operational tasks, but please finish the thought. Oh no, you know it's one thing. Uh, not only, you know, uh, have these, you know, conventions and the comic cons have affected our business, your business, everybody's business. I mean, everybody's just buying online now. And fortunately that's staying very, very strong. Uh, all the online yeah. purchases, they're talking to a lot of our dealer friends and they are pleasantly surprised with how much they're able to sell online. Um, I don't know how long that's going to last for, but Hey, got to live day by day with this, this thing. Um, but, um, yeah, I do miss the conventions. I miss the camaraderie. I, yeah. I, I enjoy it. Actually, it's, I'm I glad you bring that up because I, I kind of want to, I want to talk about that like in general, because I think that that is like kind of the heart of why we have you guys on is that, you know, we work with a lot of promoters and here and there, you know, you guys are at shows. We love getting you guys into shows that we're at because we love seeing you guys, number one, but number two, uh, you know, what, I, what can you can you like explain to everybody that's watching like what value and what services you guys bring to a con that way you know if we you know might have a promoter that's on that's watching right now they understand like oh i don't have any authentication at my at my uh show why should i why should i have authentication at my show so maybe you guys mm -hmm. can talk about that i think that's really important to talk about no, no doubt and and i want to say about 10 years ago uh, people didn't know what autograph authentication was at Comic Cons. It was more of a sports collector's uh, thing. Right. You know, people people saw the value at all the sports conventions and all the signings throughout the country, all throughout the world. But when it came to entertainment autographs, I guess they were just either misinformed or I guess misinformed is not the right word, but um, just didn't know much about what aut autograph authentication was and why it was so important. Um, you know, and, uh, now we're getting, you know, messages to see if we're going to be at, you know, small comic cons in, in, uh, you know, uh, Olympia, you know, Washington, or, you know, you know, <laughs> that have like, you know, three tables set up. So it's becoming a, a necessity and it's becoming a, a staple in a lot of the comic cons. We go to all the big ones, or at least we, we try to go to every single big one, but also we, we find a lot of success at the smaller ones too. Um, wherever there's an autograph, you don't know how long 
that person is going to be signing autographs. They can turn into JD Salinger at any point and stop right. signing autographs. And, you know, if you need to complete, you know, a Willow piece or, you know, a GI Joe piece, this could be the guy's last signing. And it's very, very difficult to, to complete those cast signed pieces as, as you know, most of you guys know. So, you know, take advantage of that and you're, you're able to, to get your authentication done at the same time. Uh, we do run specials every time we do uh, these conventions. Um, so, you know, it's financially, you take advantage of it. And, um, you know, it's a one-stop shop. You get your stuff signed, authenticated, get it framed up, and now you can enjoy it. Yeah, I think that's cool to see the, uh, especially like some of the guys from like the Star Trek conventions in the in the seventies, and they have the original programs that they were getting signed pretty much throughout the years, and then they finally bring it. Uh, like maybe they missed one person that, uh, like Michelle Nichols is signing at one of the uh, at, at the current con, so that's the last person that he needed. And he finally brings it to our table, like after it's all complete. And then that's the time he's like, okay, now I want to complete it. So it's, it's that next step that I think people um, kind of like as a collector. And I, I've noticed that of so, uh, the kind of the philosophy of that is that like somebody is um, that they want something. It's almost like the chase to get it. Then they have it. And then they're like, okay, what do I do next with this? And then that is <laughs> yeah. the thing. That is the thing that like, as as a company like ourselves we can provide resources for that next step like what do you want to do with it you want to get it appraised you want to get a formal appraisal on it you're going to put it in uh, um like for your estate and insurance purposes or so there's those are the types of tools that we're designing in the background and that's the type of um kind of insurance that people want they want somebody who is who doesn't have that conflict of interest to have their back when it comes to their autographs and right. that's kind of what jsa is is about so i mean it's uh, yeah. it's undoubted that jsa for every even piece of memorabilia i've had that i've certified it has raised the value of that item and if not it if not raise the value at least protect the value of the item so that's that's why it's so important to let our audience know that getting an autograph certified by a reputable company like JSA, who is the leader in autograph authentication, it, it is mainly an insurance for your item so that your kids can go on and be able to maybe turn that over if they, they're, you know, a tough time happens, sort of like this epidemic. Uh, and it gives them the right. ability to uh, take your collection into a passion, not only take it from a hobby, but turn it into something that's sustainable. Yeah. And I think that reputate that like um, that reputation of how that was built like throughout the years and kind of going back to when my dad first started authenticating and and obviously he was with he was with uh, he built um, our competitors company PSA first the uh, the DNA uh, PSA DNA their autograph authentication division um, and when he started doing that um, I mean it it was the wild west before that so they see this guy come into the picture and he has this uh he has this knowledge base and and everything and i mean truthfully i mean people weren't happy about it right right at first i mean the people obviously that were trying to yeah that, that yeah and that that was definitely something that um i don't think either one of us really truly saw like what that was like in the very, very beginning and how tough that must have been for him. Because, uh, I mean, it was almost like the sheriff coming into town and just like, yeah. okay, <laughs> here, here's all the rules, guys. I, I saw, I saw that, I, that, that was back in 1999, 2000. And, um, you know, autograph authentication was brand new. People didn't understand it. They knew about the grading of cards. Coin grading was out there. Stamp grading was out there. But autograph authentication, we're like, you know, I had a lot of dealers and I had like a hairy eyeball, like, hey, you know, my reputation speaks for itself. You know, anybody will buy an autograph from me. I only buy from good sources. Well, come to realize and studying this stuff for my whole life, you, you find new information all the time. You discover a secretarial version, you know, after you've authenticated 20 of them. And you know what? Right. When you find that out. You stop authenticating that piece. You change your file. 
And you know what? That's that's just it's it's a constant learning process when it comes to this autograph authentication. So a lot of mistakes were made when people were selling autographs without authentication and just going strictly off of, well, I, you know, I bought it from an old man down the street. He never forged anything. <laughs> well, he also sent autographs through the mail. And, yeah. you know, they were stamped Mickey Mantles. Any Anytime you see a Mickey Mantle that's in red ink on an index card, there's a 99.9% .9 chance that that thing is a stamp. So wow, you know, people didn't know, know that. And Elizabeth Taylor secretarials, there's, there's, they're all over the place. Uh, if you want to get yeah. into, um, you know, uh, uh, every entertainment star, they just don't have the time to sign the in insane amount of mail that comes. Auto auto pens. Auto pens, and yeah. um, so there's. It's funny because when I collect, I, I've been collecting for you know since the early '90s, and uh, I remember when all this started. And I, and I felt like every time I'd go up to a table at like a show, like a sports show, I'd be like, how do you know? Like, if you didn't get all these yourself, how do you know they're real? Like, how, how can you, like, you know, I don't care what your reputation is because I don't know you. Like, I've never met you before. You're just some dude at, at a show with a, you know, like a card table. And, yeah. and so I think it's funny that, you know, There's still it's gotten, like that out it's, <laughs> yeah. And it's gotten to this point now, I think that, you know, nobody and, and nobody can really a hundred percent be an expert on every single autograph no, but definitely uh, that actually leads me to my next collect the question which is who out of each of you who do you who are your specialties like who's your your autograph that you know better than anybody else you know that's uh that is a good question because we we study everybody's signature and you know i'm not a guru of motley crew but we have two <laughs> within our team that know that right know very very well that know their signing habits, that know that, you know, Mick Mars is probably the toughest one out of the four. And um, it, it's uh, – so, so you, we, within JSA, we seek people that are gurus with music autographs, are gurus with jazz autographs. There's a guy that, that works with us that strictly knows Muhammad Ali. That's all he cares about. Yeah. He's obsessed with Muhammad <laughs> Ali's autograph. So when we're stuck on a, you know, an autograph from the seventies where Ali had a ton of secretarial Belinda, his wife was signing through the mail for him and she was very, very talented at his autograph. The age of the ink is perfect, you know, so it doesn't look like a forgery or anything fresh. Um, you know, we seek that person, that experts, um, autograph, but, uh, to answer your question, um, uh, Derek Jeter, Arnold Schwarzenegger, um, you got to know the big guys, Mickey Mantle, Ted Williams, Joe DiMaggio, Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods. Uh, those guys are submitted every single day. I don't think there's a day that goes by <laughs> that I don't see five Mickey Mantle autographs. And I'm not exaggerating, guys. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, you yeah, have, I, I, hands down, one of the largest Arnold Schwarzenegger autograph collections, right, Jimmy? I think so. I'd love to. I'd love to hear about <laughs> somebody. Like, come on. <laughs> He's going off screen to start showing us all of his oh, cool God. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I got you that. I got you that. That's a pretty cool that's, piece. That's beautiful. Yeah. It looks. That's amazing. Was, was that when he did uh, one of the shows? This was actually uh, signed for uh, one of our dealers. And, um, oh, wow. You got it. Yeah. You got it signed. And, you know, Schwarzenegger is a good signer. Um, but you have to live in Southern California. I mean, he doesn't really leave SoCal, does he? Uh, it depends. Uh, we've, we've seen him a couple times driving yeah. around. Seen him yeah, a, couple a couple times, times driving around. But, you know, he does leave uh, occasionally for a, a convention. Or I know that yeah. his, uh, his, um, I think it's Mr. Olympia show just got canceled or postponed this year. Yeah. But he yeah. does, he does attend certain things and he's now you know he's a political figure so yeah uh his his message and his platform mean a lot to people around the world so he does travel from time to time um ryan who who's your specialty uh, uh i mean i what i'm mostly interested in is definitely the entertainment uh like marvel superheroes uh directors like any anybody from film and, and television um, just cause that's what my background is. That's what I studied in school. Um, and, uh, I, right now I'm trying for all of the, um, every director of star Wars, um, that, wow. that has directed a star Wars movie. Uh, obviously Mar uh, Mark one is, is, I don't know how the heck to get him. I've, I've been looking for his autograph forever, but I mean, he died 
very shortly after Return of the Jedi. So it was it was it was, car- it was hard to um, uh, hard to obtain anything that I guess is uh, is to my knowledge that exists out there. Um, the uh, I, I guess most of the stuff that um, yeah, I mean comic books, signed comic books and stuff. Uh, I guess the sports stuff. If it had to be, probably baseball. I don't really watch football or, or really any uh, major sport for that matter. I, I usually just stick right to, to television and, and film. So uh, like it, like my brother said, everybody has their own interest into this stuff. Uh, we got a, a guy that, that works for us that is uh, heavily into um, like UFC and wrestling and that. So that's, that's extremely important to have uh, that knowledge base on your staff because the stuff is constantly coming in and like it, it will take the person who's not interested in it a lot more time to go through that collection and identify everything. Cause that is the first part of authentication is identifying who the heck you're looking Absolutely. at. Like yeah. is, and if there, if there would be a technology out there that would be great. I, I, mean, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I think as, as far as AI, if that's going into the future, I mean, definitely for authentication, I mean, somebody's definitely, I mean, probably already has this ideas in the works, but of just getting AI technology to identify autographs. Mm -hmm. And that would save us, like, I mean, if it was 90%, and then we can take over the next 10% uh, of of just truly the part that you need a human mind to accomplish that that part of the service i think there's going to be so. about 300 squiggle al pacinos that the ai cannot cover <laughs> no yeah. definitely not only only thing but, about yeah i that. mean just the form the form i mean if they could do it with uh like points and and all of that stuff uh, I, I i think there's a lot of things that you can tell a computer to do uh, especially now in this day and age and uh, i'm i would not be surprised well, so. they, they actually have a lego a lego identifier app where you can like, if you have all your Legos spread out and you need a certain size, yeah, wow. you can actually right. like put your phone on it and it'll then identify all those sizes for you. That's why. Yeah. yeah. But, so, I mean, it's coming. I'm sure you, something like that'll come I'm at glad, some point. I'm, I'm glad you brought this up, uh, Ryan. I mean, as you say that the industry with, in terms of authentication, it's, it's rapid, it's constantly growing. Your it's department, changing. it's changing constantly. Your department, which is marketing, is ever it's it's always it's always growing it's always moving it's 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 evanescent it, it's got to change at any given moment how do you stay on top of that what's the extent of your job with regards to social media the marketing element because it, it's a beast to tackle and memorabilia how do you how do you keep on top of that um i i think the biggest thing that has helped me uh in in everything is um is make making sure that I I am a content creator is that I learned all of that stuff first um, because that that right there is the the game changing stuff if you can create something out of nothing uh, that's your starting point with marketing and um, and I can really do a lot of uh, I can wear a lot of different hats with that and um, and really just understanding video um, I. I guess the uh, creating sort of um, more like profiles on autographs and autograph analysis stuff, like that's the sort of thing that I want to do more of, uh, especially with my dad and my brother. Uh, and, um, and, and really, I mean, any authenticator that has enough knowledge on the subject that we're, that we're focusing on. But um, I think it's translating that knowledge to, the, the normal viewer of un- letting them understand what authentication is. And I think the biggest thing that we do with that is somebody submits something uh, and we show off those collectibles that people submit across where we are at shows, stuff that gets mailed into us. We're constantly posting that stuff because one, um, it's kind of that pride moment of the person that submitted it. Uh, they don't have to show their face in it. You could just show the autograph or whatever, but they, they, they're like, Oh wow. JSA appreciated this, this autograph and, uh, that, that I have. And, and one, it's showing an example to somebody that this is a, um, uh, like this is, this is the real deal. Like the JSA stands behind this autograph and, uh, or there's an example of one. So yeah, I, I think that's definitely important to people to see that. So for Absolutely. sure. 
Absolutely. How, I mean, the same question would apply to you, uh, Jimmy, is that, you know, you're the vice president of James Spence Authentication. The industry is always changing. How do you stay on top of the, the ever-changing in the industry? It's all, it's all about evolving, you know, and I'm always thinking and, and trying to implement new ideas to what we do to make things go more efficiently. Um, Taking on Comic Cons was a huge game changer with JSA. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I said earlier in the in the uh, video, you know, JSA was synonymous with sports autographs about ten years ago. I, I get that question all the time. Do you guys authenticate entertainment autographs? Do you guys authenticate music autographs? And we had the tools, we had the music experts, we had the entertainment experts, but we always felt that we were, you know the guys for, for Mickey Mantle and Derek Jeter and, you know, uh, Babe Ruth, which isn't necessarily bad, but we needed to um, expand our, our horizon. And once we got involved in comic cons, uh, thanks to you guys for, for getting us into a lot of these comic cons. I mean, that, that was huge. It was a huge plug for us. I mean, a lot of the promoters were very hesitant on having hey, you know, I don't know if that might disrupt a lot of the dealers. Well, if dealers are scared, to have an autograph authenticator in the building, then you shouldn't yeah. have the dealer there. Because <laughs> there's something exactly. wrong with that. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And, <laughs> it's funny because I, I always uh, I always thought that um, it was really important, you know, to have, you know, you guys there because my, from my experience, you guys, your specialty, I mean, just look at what we just talked about a minute ago. Your specialties are not sports. I mean, Jimmy, your yours is, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger and and Ryan, you said that yours are like, you know, Marvel guys and stuff like that. So obviously you guys have that, you know, that outside of the sports realm knowledge. And I always heard that too from people like I'd be on the internet and I'd read like, oh, they're just good for sports. And I'm like, what? Absolutely like, not. Right. I know these yeah. guys real well and you're full of it. Like that's not yeah. true. Well, it took, you know, it just took years of going to the Comic Cons and, and speaking with a lot of the uh, the music chasers or the music collectors or the entertainment collectors. And it's a whole different breed of collecting. You know, people yeah, right. not know who, you know, Vince Wilfork is, but they can recite every Star Wars character known to man. And yeah, um, yeah. You, know, and that, you guys, you guys have the team. I mean, I, I think even Roger Epperson works with you guys in terms of music, yes. right? Oh, so, yeah. Yep. That, I mean, he's one of the leaders of music authentication. And, you know, you have these experts in each of their fields basically giving opinions on these autographs. And I think it's exceptional. Um, and it's yeah. that's why it's one of the reasons I, you know, I've met a lot of the team. It's one of the reasons why I helped out in trying to make sure that JSA is a present, uh, presence at every Comic-Con that Chris and I attend whether it's the Galaxy Con shows or at one time LA Comic Con or any of these shows that we've ever put you in contact with, it's important to have authentication there. It's important to make sure that our fan is protected and the fan really understands the value of autograph authentication. Um, and, you know, yeah. just overall, the whole goal is to prevent forgeries. I mean, yes. And, you know, and they exist at these shows. The same people that are signing the autographs at the show are being forged at the show and people are trying to come to our table and say, Hey, I just got this Gal Gadot signed. She signed, you know, she signed me three photos <laughs> oh, for me. That is Apple embarrassing. At uh, Ace Comic Con in uh, New York, the very first Ace Comic Con, a uh, gentleman walks up, he's standing in a line with, with everybody. And I'm, I'm actually with my brother and the guy plopped down three Gal Gadot photos. And I, I like twisted my head and I was like, where did you get these from? Did you, did you buy these from a dealer? And he goes, no, no, no. She signed them. I said, when? <laughs> I'm like, you looked at the back of the photo. I the remember, the yeah, photo. remember you looked at and there was just like weird yeah. stickers on the back and stuff. It was just like, there was a bunch of red flags. Oh, and yeah. yeah. So, you know, when, when you catch somebody in a situation like that, they, they run away. But yeah. you know, there are people out there that are trying to fool us all the time. And, you know, yeah. we got to be on top of our game. Always. And, and fortunately, we do have the right tools. We have the best exemplar uh, database in the industry. I've talked to our competitors that have worked for us and worked for you know our competition. And they said, hands down, you know, JSA is, is, is unbelievable. Um, and, uh, you know, that's that's a forever growing database right there. But, 
And I'm proud to, whenever I have something that I consider an exemplar, I'm proud to send it to you guys. Cause then that way, yeah. we, you know, it, like Jennifer Jason Lee, I don't think anybody ever saw what a full Jennifer Jason Lee ever was. Oh, so, yeah. you know, to finally get to, to see what it looked like, you know, it's good to have that in the database. And your name and your name is etched in there like a watermark. I know. So I love it. I take great pride in that. <laughs> you're you're yeah. so, uh, I take a great I take great pride in it. What, I I remember I met, I first met Neri. I first you um I first met you. I bought those uh those three those three Star Wars autographs off of you. And you were really trying to get me to get a Mel Brooks. Like you were like, <laughs> like maybe you should go with the Mel Brooks. I'm like, but I want the three Star Wars autographs. And you're okay. like, but you really I, should buy three. You Mel I will Brooks tell Mel. you, I will <laughs> tell you. <laughs> the Templar files in, at, in JSA, the Mel Brooks file is so oh, large. It's stacked. It's, it's stacked. stacked. With, Art, with Chris and me, uh, you know, for many years we uh, like we set got, over seven hundred exemplars just from us. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so you know, that's when you know, when we're talking about people that we have specialties on. There's certain eye, uh, there's a certain eye we have for p certain people. For us, it's Mel Brooks. I can spot a Mel. I could yeah. sniff a Mel Brooks fake from three hundred miles. You know, yeah. so yeah, you know what would be uh, very valuable. Uh, not only the real, real autographs, Neri, but the secretarials that you've discovered, absolutely. forgeries that are that you've discovered. I mean, we know some forgers by name. We know who they are, <laughs> where they live. Uh, we can't call them out because you get involved in a lawsuit. But uh, that's how intense our research is we were able to figure out exactly like who is forging this stuff. And, um, yeah, you know, that, and that goes for the bat boys back in the, uh, back in the fifties with the Brooklyn Dodger organization, you know, that named Charlie D Giovanna, who was an adult bat boy used to sign autographs for all the players. And, uh, actually Duke Snyder wrote how good Charlie D Giovanna was at signing his autograph. He said he signed it wow. better than he did. So, <laughs> Yeah, if you have a Brooklyn Dodgers baseball from the 50s, I would say there's about a 60% chance that it has at least one clubhouse signature on that. Wow. Wow. In, yeah. in, in terms of the entire industry, whether it's sports or entertainment, what signature do you think is the most forged that you guys see? Michael Jordan. Hands down. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was going to say oh, it's yeah. got to be yeah. Jordan. Man. We get at least two a week, even in through the mail. They're just wow. everywhere. And now it's starting to creep up. There's, I mean, I guess naturally there's there's a lot of Kobe's that are coming in, but uh, but I would just say just it doesn't matter like at, at any day Michael Jordan is just is just there in our office. Ninety, so. 90 percent failure rate, guys. It's um, funny because I I don't know if you guys know this, but the '86 Flair basketball set, mm -hmm. like that's like that's like my my holy grail. I actually own like probably three full sets. Oh, wow. And Alex, for people that don't know my roommate, my roommate, my roommate's Alex, he's our lawyer. Uh, Alex actually completed an 86 Flair set completely signed. Wow. And it, it's Whoa. got everybody. He's even got the Jordan. And the funny thing is, is that I'm almost done with my set and I still need a Jordan, unfortunately. But I've been looking to get Jordan's, uh, you know, a Jordan rookie card. So if there's anybody out there that has one and they want to. <laughs> Yeah. Part with it, and they want to yeah. trade me or sell it to me. Let me know. They're but anyways, I uh, value too. You know, with this yeah. Jordan, this Jordan documentary coming out, I, I think what are they going to launch that on Netflix? It might be tomorrow yeah. or something. But I've been looking at Jordan rookie cards. They're just double of what they were last year. If somebody was yeah. giving them oh, away yeah. at the yeah. national last year. I thought that there was some promotion going on or something that they somebody was giving away like a a Jordan rookie card every day there or something oh that, that the show was going on. Gary yeah. yeah. I, I forget what that promotion <laughs> was, but I remember seeing that. I'm like, well now, I mean, yeah, it's, it's definitely, well, it, it's, definitely it's crazy. funny because we actually just came across, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but my roommate and I, we, you know, I'm constantly looking one for, for one and he's keeping an eye out for me too. And we came across one because Jordan had his, his camp, in Santa Barbara, everybody knows that he had his camp in Santa Barbara and basically every kid in attendance would get one autograph and then UDA upper deck authenticated would be there and sticker the item. Um, and a lot of people don't know this, but he actually had a camp in the early nineties in Vegas and he did it there for, I think two years from what I remember, mm -hmm. it was like 93 or something like that. And 
uh, we came across one on eBay, a, a Jordan rookie card on eBay that had the Upper Deck Authentication sticker on it, but the cert had the sticker, like the, the Vegas sticker, but the copyright on the actual cert was from 2002. <laughs> and so I was like, wait a second, how is that even possible? Like, that's not even, and so it was basically like a, you know, a really good forged one that somebody threw a fake cert on. Yeah. And I was like, wow, like, it's so intense. Like the ones that even look real, you got to be careful, you know? Yeah. And sometimes forgers don't do their homework properly, you know, with, with, yep. the, you know, and the, and the errors of baseballs, which we've extensively studied. We know, we know when minor league baseballs were manufactured now. So, you know, people are trying right. to get, you know, uh, they're trying to tr get tricky here and, and get an old, you know, official Pacific Coast League baseball like uh you know harry a williams or whatever but if they can't find one of those because they're very rare to to find a uh, a vintage unsigned baseball especially from one from the minor leagues but um uh, you know they make the mistake of you know forging a baseball that was manufactured after babe ruth died or you know, even manufactured right. after roger maris died and this stuff still sells on ebay sells for big money um, it's a shame, but they're neat. I, I literally, uh, literally a couple days ago on eBay and you guys are going to love this. I saw a Kurt Cobain signed pop vinyl. You know, I saw uh, that thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they had the, they had the, um, well, the guy listed it for like 30 bucks. No, 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 no. The guy listed it for like, didn't he list it for like 30 bucks or something? And yeah. like, didn't, and, but he said, he goes, there is a, um, a pre-printed signature on the on the cellophane like he listed in the description but i mean oh, of course God. yeah there were pe <laughs> there were people like oh like why would he ever do this <laughs> and it's like all right uh, yeah it's it's funny because we actually nuri and i and i don't know if anybody out there knows this we actually patrol ebay for our own client signatures a lot because believe it or not every once in a while there is a, a forgery up there and the one that is one of my favorites to bust and i hate it i hate seeing them when they go up but there's somebody that constantly puts up an Arlene Sorkin signed pop. And she didn't sign, she doesn't sign any pops for anybody except for Nuri and I. We're the only right. ones that have those signed it, from anybody. You, and it, it was and only they're, and they're authenticated these, by JSA. They were authenticated right. by JSA and they were signed yeah. specifically at the two signings that she ever did. Right. So right. now, of course, yeah. we're working on another one, but it's very funny to me when people list these and we send the messages saying, how did you get this signed? And they're like, we got it in person. No, you right. didn't. That yeah, never happened. No, you <laughs> you know? Well, yeah, and that's a, that, that's a thing that people like as collectors is the, uh, is, is how stuff becomes exclusive in the marketplace. And, um, that, that is something that uh, I think as a, as a dealer, and I mean, I'm, I'm not a dealer, but I, I, I like to help market dealers and, and, and help uh, and help see them succeed because it helps us succeed and everything, and uh, and it also helps the buyer succeed. So it's almost like this triangle of how I always look at it with authentication, the buyer, and the seller. And like everybody is kind of making each other comfortable in the situation because it's a checks and balances system. And that so you guys are comfortable of selling something that you solely don't have to stand behind. Like it's not just your word to the to the buyer. It's also if you have authentication with it, it's the authentication company and the dealer to kind of help smooth the transaction along. Right. Um, and uh, as for the buyer as well, because I mean that's the thing that we get a lot of is um, somebody submits something and they're like, oh well, it has this certificate and uh yeah it doesn't have an address on there or anything and it's just got this <laughs> company's name of sports so, and it's just like some yeah. generic name and but it looks like a document uh, or a certificate of authenticity and they think that that is good enough but they're still like they're still weary about it because why would they be calling us and right. that's the thing that like I'm starting to understand now about, uh, about them is that they, uh, is that that's it, authentication is extremely important to not just the buyer, but also the seller to kind of help those transactions go smoother. No doubt. Ryan, since you're, since you're like a, a Marvel, you know, comic book movie specialist, I've actually seen these and I cringe every time I see them, but I'm sure that you know what I'm talking about, but have you ever seen the full size posters 
where they yeah. apparently it's like from Captain America and it's got the Marvel cert with it. Like right. I, every time I see those, I I've cringe because I'm like, yeah, I know yeah. these are fake. I know they're fake. <laughs> yeah, we got one in. Uh, I think it was about four or five months ago, and it was just like it. It had like a document that oh, this was signed by the whole cast, and it had like this like look like an official Marvel like document that like came with it and stuff. And uh, they, they try to put it on heavier stock paper to like make the, <laughs> I don't know, like it's just, I don't know. I mean, but that's not like our, our authenticity. It's not just the piece of paper that somebody gets uh, like right. this. It's, it's them going onto the website, like putting in the certification number calling the number that's on the bottom of that thing and speaking to somebody and saying, right. Oh, Oh, you guys exist. It's not just like, Absolutely. Oh, you pick up this document. That's something you bought back in the eighties and nineties. And right. that dude doesn't exist anymore. Either his business got shut down or he moved on to, I don't know, fixing roofs or something. I, I don't know. And like, you, guys, it's, <laughs> and you stand by your name and I know there's, there's endless accounts that you guys stand by your name. And if there was ever a time where you gave a mistake on your opinion, you guys actually bought back the autograph. So it would not stay on the market. I mean, mm -hmm. I know your competitors don't do that. So, I mean, that's how I know your name is pristine in this, in this industry. Yeah. It's, right. it's hard to run away, you know, and we're not infallible. I mean, I want to say that we make, out of a, a thousand or 10,000 autographs, we might make a mistake on one, but that's some pretty good, that's a pretty good batting average. I mean, there's that's always, there's always gonna yeah. be a mistake that that is made until we're machines and we program our exemplar file to do what we do. Um, it's, and any authenticator that tells you that he's never made a mistake, he's lying to you because- Well, that's why our witness, in, our witness department is so important in, in, in that because, uh, us sitting down with those celebrities and, and especially, I mean, what we do with you guys, if we do a signing and we're there in the presence, um, it, 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 that's even more security to somebody who's buying the autograph because one, we're standing behind that autograph 100% and we're guaranteeing that that autograph is authentic. Um, yeah. So, at, at, and it also helps our exemplar file extremely because now we have a, the, the highest level of authenticity that we can, uh, as an example, that we can base off of. Um, and, and that's sort of how our exemplar file works. And I mean, it's, I mean, Jimbo can speak more into this and everything, but that tool right there, if you don't have that as an authenticator, and my dad like repeats this to everybody, if you do not have an exemplar file, then there's no business of authenticating. It's just, it won't work. You, you can't do it. It's, you know, next to the loop, you know, you need a loop to make sure that autographs are live. There's a lot of auto pens that are now entering the, the market. I'm sure you guys have come across these things where, you know, you this, there's machines and they're very, very affordable now where you can program the autograph, a real autograph, and then the machine will sign the autograph, that autograph, and it's going to be the same variation over and over and over again, but um, it could sign on Funkos. It could sign on on very odd shaped items. And uh, we've seen a huge influx in uh, auto pen Funko, Funko Pops. Yeah. It's expensive. Really? They flatten out, they flatten really? out the boxes. Yeah, yeah. 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 Wow, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah, I created, there's one whole eBay account that just has just a ton of them. And wow. it's just and crazy. I mean, yeah. Ozzy, Ozzy Osbourne, I mean, not Ozzy Osbourne, but whoever does his merchandise department for the CDs, I know we were talking about it earlier. They're, the community's in, up, in an uproar right now because oh. Ozzy Osbourne did oh, it on their CDs. Uh, you know, there was three right. three different auto pens to confuse people. Um, and I, <laughs> oh, you know, and, you know, it's funny that, you know, Chris Wilcox, who's a, a promoter that runs yeah. Undiscovered World and Comic-Con. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I know Chris. Yeah, yeah he, he just posted that. So there you go. You wow. know, it's, yep. it's crazy that that's the kind of thing that we you you guys have to deal with and the kind of things that a consumer has to, you know, bat against, uh, you know. For for the people out there, guys, what what's a like a good way to spot an auto pen in your opinion? Like just right off the bat, like just one one little thing, dead giveaway. Initial stroke, terminal stroke, you won't see any fluidity. Uh, you're going to see two manufactured dots 
that I are call them a hard start and a hard stop, right? Exactly. Yeah. 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 So that's the easy. Yeah, I've seen a lot of those like out there. Yeah, and it's crazy. Like when you see them, you're like, dude, really? Come on, man. <laughs> well, also with the Funkos though, it's 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 stupid though how they're doing it with the Funkos because they're flattening it out, yeah. and then they're like they're signing over like the side, so that it's not natural that somebody unless like somebody signed like that. Like, and I have like a couple of uh, signatures that are on the Funko that like. I guess the chaser had him out like flat and then he signed it, but you can kind of see that skip over like it's very on the edge it's on the fluid. yeah, it's, it's like natural. Yeah. 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 It's almost like the uncanny valley when you look at like a CGI character and they kind of look a little weird and stuff. And mm -hmm. it like it, it's sort of like that in a way. It's something right. off about it that it's uncomfortable to us. Right. So right. Before we answer some of the fan questions, you know, I know we talked about the most forged autograph, which is Michael Jordan that you guys see, but what is the mo one autograph that you guys authenticate the most of that's real? Other than Bob Feller. <laughs> Other than Bob Feller, yeah. Um, oh, uh, how about, how about, uh, how about, um, <laughs> you know, there's a lot, and I can say this now, like modern is definitely a lot of Christopher Sabat. You know, there's, there's, is, right? there's, really? there's a lot of them. Sabat, yeah, it's... same signer, Chris Sabat, Chris Sabat, yeah. or Chris Sabat. How do you say it? I, I think it's Sabat, but it, you Sabat? Know, I, yeah, yeah, I think it's Chris Sabat. We, yeah, we authenticate more Chris Sabats now than God than Moose Scourin. Wow, mean, there's <laughs> tons of them. Yeah, but yeah, there, there's a lot of he's in demand though. I mean, a lot of the a lot of the uh, fans really like him, and they yeah. and he is and he knows us too. So, and I know that he's sent uh, people over from his table over to ours to get something authenticated because he sees the value in it. Absolutely. He sees right. that. Yeah, he he knows as a celebrity, and that's what I love about it is that when a celebrity gets it, and they're like, yes, they're like, uh, I understand the protection that this offers around my autograph because like now somebody doesn't go online and they're not buying something that's bad and getting ripped off. Mm -hmm. So absolutely. Yeah. It's funny when we, when we were in, uh, when we were in San Antonio doing Elmo city comic con, your dad was there. It was when Arnold was signing. <laughs> and the only comic con that he went to. You called, you called yeah. me and, uh, rare and I walked away and I came back yeah. and Mary Gibbs, the voice of boo, was yeah. standing there and he was showing her like his exemplar file and she was like, Oh my God, it's so amazing. Yeah, we're very proud of it. I mean, it, it'll blow your mind the next time. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure Chris has, has shown you guys how, how extensive it is. And you know, it could be somebody so random, a B rated actor and we'll have yeah. 150 examples of the all in chronological order. I love That's it. Awesome. I love it. Yeah. Are you guys okay with taking some fan questions? I oh, mean, absolutely. We, right. Yeah. Okay. So the first one is John McNeil. They say, do you guys see any current or future change in the success rate of through the mail autographs due to COVID-19? Absolutely. Yeah. People are going to be afraid to touch any type of fan mail. Um, I wouldn't expect, you know, I, I know like everybody's home right now. And, you know, for a minute, I thought that was a good idea. You know, oh, we should send, you know, a bunch of through the mail requests to people that usually don't sign. I bet their publicists and their lawyers or whoever that, you know, kind of runs their, their day-to-day -day operations are telling them not to, not to touch anything. Absolutely. <laughs> and I, we agree. Honestly, right now, guys, we're not yeah. accepting anything through the mail for celeb works. It's right. I mean, it's one of those things that we need to take preventative measures for ourselves and for right. you guys that uh, we're all safe and our clients are safe. And uh, so don't send anything unsolicited, please. Um, uh, the next thing is Saki the Sock Puppet wants to know what is the best autograph memorabilia piece you've ever authenticated? The best mm. or the most valuable? The most valuable would have to be the um, the bat, the Ruth bat, the bat yeah. that Babe Ruth used to hit his first home run in Yankee Stadium. He signed. Holy it. cow! Yeah, he signed that, and then he, uh, wow. he he gave it to a Bat Boy, and then the Bat Boy sold it in like the '80s or the '70s. And then it sold for 1.5 million within the past 10 years. Oh my God. I forget the auction wow. house's name, but at yeah, 1.5 oh, wow. million, I've never seen an autograph sell for more than that. No, I think wow. it might have been amazing. Sotheby's. I think Sotheby's or Christie's. Yeah, Sotheby's or Christie's. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. But, That's um, so cool. The best, the best autograph, man. 
I guess that's subjective, you know, with what we all collect. Um, and, you know, it's a question I get all the time. I've, <laughs> that I was gonna, such I, a subjective I, question. I was going to make – Don't ask me to fix your car. But, yeah, when it comes to autographs, that's – that's what I do. Um, I was going to say any Arnold Schwarzenegger that uh, Jimmy's bought in the last more. three months. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, um, what about you, Ryan? What is the best piece of memorabilia you've ever uh, that's ever come across your table? Um, I, I, it's so high. I mean, there's there's so much stuff that just comes on through. Something that I was impressed about, and I I think it's general, and I know a lot of collectors are really into this. Um, I really like the Captain America shields that are getting signed by everybody. I think that that's such a neat project. It's such a cool theme. It's simple. Um, uh, I mean, well, it's not as simple as now. I mean, especially but to, <laughs> yeah, you're to getting, getting right those people. <laughs> yeah, you can't get anybody now. But I love that like somebody started it off with either like Chris Evans in the center or get Stanley in the center. And then they build everybody around like the perimeter of it. And I just think that that's so cool. Uh, one, one guy, uh, I, I, he must've like, he must've had 15 to 20 grand invested into this freaking shield. I mean, j just from traveling and, oh, and going wow. plays, I, I, that's probably, I'm like, that's probably under <laughs> what I'm, of what it that's really cost true. them. I mean, of all the right. tickets and everything. And, yeah, that's so. an impressive piece walking around the Comic Cons is that shield. I think we've all seen at least an image of, of the shield with everybody on it. That's, uh, yeah. that's pretty every, incredible. Every Comic Con we go to, every you know big Comic Con is out there. He's, he's walking around with that shield. <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. <laughs> Well, hopefully, I think he has his own Instagram page for it. Oh, does he really? <laughs> yeah, I think I'm, I'm assuming he doesn't have Scarlett Johansson on it yet. It's the only person he probably doesn't have. No, no, that is like one person. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I've yeah, seen yeah, the tough. shields. I've seen the shield signed by uh, Scarlett Johansson, but I think that one was um, one that like Paul Rudd got. Like he he kind of personally went up to each of. The people and got somebody to sign it i think it was for uh like a charity thing or something it wasn't yeah for yeah. It, it, it wasn't at like a convention in front of the public or anything so. i right. think that i think they're working on trying to get scarlet to do a show every every couple days so i'm sure that at some time oh, in the man. next 10 years no working, ain't gonna happen i, I think i will <laughs> we'll, we'll make a bet chris that i, I think it's gonna happen uh, Scarlett, if you're watching, CelebWorks would like to bring you to a show. <laughs> okay, so Mary Holland Tuckwell says sharing stream from Australia. Uh, Mary. Uh, Saki the Sock Puppet says, will JSA be back at Ace Comic Con Midwest this year? <laughs> Maybe not. Well, I think it's – oh, yeah, no, they changed it, yeah, in October, right? It's going to be in Chicago, right? Or at least I think yeah, so. right now yeah. it's in Chicago. We will absolutely be there. We're at every Ace Comic Con – we're at every Galaxy Con, um, you know. We're, we're we try to go to them all. If if we're available, if we have the horses, we'll be there. Amazing. That, that's important with with uh, shows like Ace and like the ones that um, if you are spending, I mean, especially like a considerable amount of money on on, on autographs and everything. Uh, it's important that the authentication is kind of there with it, and that's where we see a lot of uh, people really like it's almost like a necessity at that point because they're like, I'm putting this much money already into this and I want to protect my investment. Right. So, um, and, and, and that's, uh, and that's something that we, we definitely are seeing a, a pattern of now. So. I, we have a question from Michael Rezer who says, what would you recommend to someone looking to find autographs of those that passed away? Is this an ethical question or like? like I think it, I think it's more. Is like, there like? <laughs> it's more. Sure. I think it's more a matter of what what kind of things to look for in terms of you know buying an autograph. I mean, they can't give away trade secrets, guys. But you know, what are the sort of the basics of looking at someone who's passed away, looking at an autograph, sort of uh, to prevent buying a fake one? Yeah, be extremely cautious of buying an autograph from anybody deceased. Obviously there are no more autographs that are being signed by that individual. So there's always going to be that, uh, um, that influx of forgeries. Um, I would uh, always pay by credit card. You know, if you're buying anything online, 
always, you know, just have that um, uh, that way out, you know, with your credit card company. And, and PayPal does a fantastic job with that. A lot of companies, right. if they want to keep their reputation, they're going to refund the the person if they're not happy. I mean, that's just how to run a um, uh, quality company. But yeah, always pay by credit card. And um, I would also have it guaranteed to pass a um, uh, a major authentication company. You know, um, I would have them write you back saying, you know, if this doesn't pass JSA, full refund, no questions asked. You see the confidence out of a seller. He's likely selling real autographs or, you know, he, he's got he's, he's not worried about, you know, selling bad autographs, um, you know, and he cares about his reputation. So that, that's my best mm -hmm. advice from buying autographs, expensive autographs. Always have your way out. Uh, I'm looking, yeah. I'm okay. I think we got a couple more and then we'll wrap it up. Lisa Williamson says, hi, Neri, hi, Chris, or hi, Chris and Neri. Seems like forever ago since I saw you in Louisville. Looking forward to seeing you all. Looking forward to seeing you too, Lisa. Um, Bryce. I think Ryan was there, right? Weren't you in Louisville? I was in Louisville. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. you were there, Ryan. Was there. Uh, I got an edge from PSA DNA. I'm sure it would pass through JSA. And I can say this, guys, just because it's a pass by another third-party company does not mean necessarily it's going to pass through JSA. So if you want the lead or an autograph authentication, turn it into JSA. That's my personal opinion. So. Ed, edge the wrestler or edge from you too? That's, I, that's the question. That's, a, that's uh, the real question. I, I, think, it's, I think it's the wrestler. I think it's the wrestler. I think it's the wrestler. I think it's, the, I think it's, the wrestler. Hey, it's cool either way. Uh, yeah. well, he, he, asked about, he asked about something else that was uh, wrestling. Uh, Mary Holland Tuckwell says, when Heath Ledger passed, the fakes were insane. I mean, I'm sure. Oh, God. Yeah. It's so rare. I mean, to see anything signed, you know, Joker related, I think there's one photo that yeah that the one that could the, the smile one the one that he's like doing the smile and they uh in the um the fog like the yeah. foggy really? it's like one it was the first promotional post it's like a close up of his face where yeah. it's like really close yeah he's going like no, this no 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 this is it's a it, it's almost like he's behind like a foggy glass and he's drawing a smile in oh, the, the uh in the glass that yeah that was yeah. they they said that was the only poster that yeah, there was there was signed. an image of him because when it happened, my buddy, one of my really really good friends, he works for Warner Brothers, and I called right. him right away and I said, okay, yeah. what's available? What's actually out there? And he clarified it for me. And he said that that was one of the posters that was actually out, like it actually went out to yeah. the theaters. But there's a close up, like a makeup test yeah. of him where it's like really really close, and he's yeah, like, right. this and yeah, you just see his face. There's a claim that for the makeup test shot that you're talking about, Chris, that there was a hundred of them that were signed that were given to the cast and crew. So there, that's that was the claim is that the, some of the cast and crew has some of these makeup test shots that are signed. So right, I mean that's mm. you know if somebody lays you know their hands on that, that's a price. It'd be good item. for the exemplar file. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah now, Heath Ledger is just a very, very difficult autograph. I mean, you're going to see him a lot on uh, Broke, Mount, Broke Back Mountain stuff. Um, you know what else? Ten yeah. things I ten yeah. things I hate about you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I actually have one, and it's on. Uh, I think it's called a movie called Four Feathers or something like that. Wow. I was like, I don't care. I'll just take Night, it. Night's, uh, Night's Tale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice <laughs> yes. well safe to say that anybody that has heath ledger doesn't have him on what they want him on so that's, <laughs> that's probably, the, probably no, the no joker one. <laughs> now before we end the show jimmy ryan can you tell people where they can find you on instagram do you have things to plug things to follow i mean of course jsa's website is spence loa.com right yep no. uh jsa loa at jsa loa is our handle throughout all of our uh platforms um, and, uh, Spence .com is our website. You can go on there to, um, learn how to submit an item, verify your authenticity, just know a little bit more about our company. Uh, look at events that we're going to be at. Unfortunately, you're going to see all throughout the April, uh, calendar, everything is postponed and canceled as of right now, naturally as, as all, uh, all, you know, Looks like but, our um, calendar. <laughs> yeah, our yeah, it's pretty deep and all that. So, uh, but I mean, we're really like itching to just get back to these shows. I mean, you guys are too. I know this is like uh, definitely a um, it, it's stir crazy. It's, yeah. it's yeah, I definitely miss the camaraderie and miss just giving somebody a bro hug. Like, I, I, there's something so simple <laughs> as that, and you can't do it. 
and it's uh but we're, we'll, we'll all get through this. We're going to be back to normal. It's going to take a, um, a slow progress, um, hoping that the national convention with the sports national, national convention is going to happen. That is supposed to happen at the beginning of August in Atlantic City, um, but it's doubtful. Um, we should see. So. I mean, we're hoping that uh, all of us will get back on the road soon. I mean, of course, we want everybody to stay safe. Keep social distancing rules. Make sure yep. you're not shaking hands. Wear your mask. Wear Don't masks. Wear gloves whenever you can. I mean, can. these are just common things. At Don't go to the, Nuri's house. Whatever your state is saying to do, you <laughs> should do. Uh, and uh, is there anything else that you guys want to plug before we end it? Um, no, just, yeah, just uh, – Practice, just practice safe, 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 practice safe six. That's what we, that's uh, <laughs> that's day two. That we we don't take credit for that. That's our dad's line. Uh, he, write, he writes it in every book that he. Uh, you know, he wrote a book about team sign baseballs. It's a classic. It's a classic on the uh, New York Times bestsellers list. I it is a. a <laughs> no, no, it's. I mean, it's a very informational book. It's it's awesome. He spent a lot of time with it. Uh, yeah. um, with. Uh, another guy named John Mitnick, who's a who's a collector and an attorney, and they uh, this book. I mean, I it, this is actually you know one of the few times I'm even mentioning this, but it's um, we get a lot of team signed baseballs, and it's a good companion to those, uh, especially if you're a, a sports fan and stuff. It, it's um, I mean, if you want one, you can call our office, and uh, uh, it, I'm sure I mean, we can what, give you a good a good deal on one. So can they find <laughs> it on that? Amazon? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure on Amazon. I know who's on there. I gotta. I I have to. I have to look at that again. Yeah. I mean, right now we're we're uh, we're selling them pretty much throughout shows and stuff. Call either office. We have a supply of them. Um, we do write autograph analysis. Uh, those are posted on our website. There's there's one uh, with Derek Jeter, uh, Christy Mathewson. Um, I'm about to drop one for Arnold Schwarzenegger. So I'm still working on that. Oh, wow, that's uh, cool. Yeah, I'm yeah. on uh, Neary's for Mel Brooks and uh, Chris yeah, Chris yeah, and Mel Brooks. yeah, I think that that's something that we want to do. We definitely want to do that in the future. Is getting different, um, different ideas like people that we trust in the industry that just have a good knowledge base on one autograph, and then they just they write like a I don't know, couple paragraphs just about that, about what what uh, Neary, Neary why they find it a, a Debbie Reynolds one. I can. That's an easy one for me. I can. I can. That, that could be confusing, you know. To yeah. Well, one, of, one, of, one of the common things, and I think people forget. I mean, I know we're supposed to end the show, but uh, Debbie Reynolds, the sec, you know, she apparently supposedly signed her TTMs for decades. It's not true. Mm. Uh, she had a very good secretary, and one of the key things to look at is the closed or open <laughs> D, right? Okay. So if you have the if you have an open D generally it's secretary and one of the things is her s uh with the ttm her s would loop back and in person would always loop forward go straight the s would go mm. straight so those are two common things either closed and open d if it's an open d probably a secretary from ttm and if the the s loops back it's also generally a ttm and if the line goes straight with the s it's it was generally authentic yes yeah, so, so mo most ttms were her secretary Ma I'm, I mean, I 99.9 percent .9 that all that the her TTMs were yeah. secretary. Was her secretary formerly a bat boy for the Dodgers in the 50s? <laughs> <laughs> the brow. Yeah, ah, I it up. Yeah. That was it. Was good. It was good. Now to end it, Chris, I had to do it. I had to do it. Sorry. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, we're approaching the end of the show. So before we take off, we want to tell you a few things. Our next show will return on next Sunday at 5 p.m. Pacific, and we want to introduce our special guest for next week's program. The show is going to be uh, – our guest on the show will be Michael Broder and Sandy Martin, the fantastic owners behind one of the largest independent convention companies in the United States. They are responsible for the iconic Raleigh, Minneapolis, Richmond, and Louisville GalaxyCon shows. And Nuri just put up a graphic for you guys to see. Absolutely. Uh, They're again. the best in the business, and we're so glad to have them on. And uh, once again, my name is Chris Arsaga, and you can follow me at the, on Instagram at the real Arsaga. And in the words of my favorite tree of all time, we are Groot.
I love that. Right. And uh, <laughs> this has been Nary Lemus. You can follow me at The Real Nary Lemus, just leaving you with a small reminder. Always keep your feet on the ground, keep reaching for the stars, and never forget to stay inspired. Night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Good night, Good night guys.